Hey folks, it's Mr. Flyer here, hope you're well, and welcome to a brand new short tour series here on the channel. And I know that you know it's in Wales because you will have seen the uh, title, but where exactly do you find me? Well, you find me in a hotel room here in Tenby. Check out this view out the window. I'm hoping you can see that. Cracking view here, and uh, yeah, looking forward to a really great tour. I don't know this part of Wales at all, I haven't done the Pembrokeshire coast, so stick around and stay tuned, let's see what it's got to offer. Okay, so before we get to the bike, where exactly am I planning to go? Well, what I've done is one of those tours from the uh, fabulous book that I've used, done many tours from in the past, called Bikers Britain, The Tours from Simon Weir. It looks like this. I highly recommend this book if you've not come across it before. Uh, if you frankly CBA to plan your own tours and you just want guaranteed good routes, then Simon Weir's done all the work for you. So, uh, yeah, check the book out. Anyway, the tour I'm going to be doing today is this one. It's called the Tenby Loop. Uh, it's tour number 24, and uh, it roughly follows this little loop here. So, starting off in Tenby, we're going to head up to, uh, and I apologise for my pronunciations, uh, Blanfoss. Uh, Newcastle, Emlyn, uh, up to Lampeter, uh, New Quay for lunch maybe, Cardigan, Fishguard, St David's, I'm choosing all the uh, easy ones to say, Haverford West and back to Tenby. It's about uh, 190 miles in total, so it's quite a long old day's riding, but it's the middle of summer when I'm recording this, I'm doing this in the middle of June, so we've got plenty of light, uh, I've got the GS outside, let's go gird up and let's get on with the riding. So the trusty GS is still here in the car park, I'm glad to say. Now, people often ask me when I'm on these trips, what do I do about parking the bike, bike security, that sort of thing. Well, I'm staying here at a place called the Park Hotel in Tenby. This is the, the car park. This is what the hotel looks like at the back. And you can see I've just got the bike parked in a normal car parking spot. I've got my usual sort of touring security. I've got my trusty light lock uh, on here, and uh, which are absolutely excellent for travelling. And as ever, discounts available. Description below if you want a light lock. They are great for travelling. Uh, and I also use a disc lock on the front as well. And just so I don't forget that I've got the disc lock, I have this uh, on here on the handlebars just so I don't try and ride off with the disc lock in place all right so that's the security of the bike I've got to uh, obviously get that all off and get my kit on and, and get riding the hotel itself uh, I couldn't honestly recommend it it's called the Park Hotel to say it's in a stunning location but uh, the breakfast was mediocre at best the room is a bit basic and it cost me a stunning 173 quid a night I'm here for two nights so I'm feeling somewhat fleeced so lovely location but couldn't recommend the hotel all right enough of that let's get on with the biking Alrighty, we are off then. What an absolutely beautiful day. I've lucked out here on the weather. So much better than last time I was in Wales, which was when I came up to North Wales to do that uh, on patrol series with the North Wales Police. Had a great time. But boy, it's so much better when the weather's good, isn't it? Now check this out. This is uh, Tenby ahead of me. This is Tenby's North Beach. There are a couple of beaches here, a North and a South Beach. Turns out it's an absolutely lovely place, about 5,000 people live here. It's something like a 13th century walled town. It's got its own castle, museum, great pubs and restaurants. Really cracking place. I'll have to come back with Mrs. Flyer on the, uh, on the Goldwing someday. And show her the delights. But yeah, beautiful down there on the beach. Had a walk along last night, I took a few snaps. Really nice spot. So it's uh, 16 and a half degrees at the moment. It's going to be around about 20 degrees, I think, today, which is perfect riding weather, isn't it? So it should be uh, in for a great ride. So the setup here I've elected to use is I've basically photocopied the route out of Simon Weir's book and I've stuck it to my tank here, so that's in front of me. I've got the uh, trusty Garmin GPS set up, not with all the routing, that's far too complicated for me. I just tend to put in the next town, so this first leg of the trip is on a road called the uh, A478 towards a town called Blainfoss. And again, I apologise to all the Welsh natives for my mullering of their language throughout this video. It's uh, B-L-A-E-N-F-O-S-S, -S. it's about uh, 20 miles to the uh, north. Not sure how scenic this first road will be, but uh, let's check it out. Well, it's so good to be out on tour again. It's been such a long time since, uh, well, it feels like it's been a long time since I've just been out, me on the bike, done my own thing in the sunshine. And of course, the whole pandemic thing absolutely scuppered most of my plans last year and this year. But one thing I was planning to do anyway, was more trips and tours at home. 
It's all very well doing these exotic trips abroad, isn't it? And of course, I love doing them. But not everybody can afford the time or money to do those. Whereas most of us can get the odd uh, weekend to do a trip in the UK. So this uh, particular trip I'm doing today, hopefully it's within everybody's reach. Although, as I uh, said before, I don't recommend staying at that uh, at the Park Hotel. Bit of a rip-off. Don't get me wrong, very friendly staff and nice enough place, but uh, outrageously expensive, I thought, at 173 quid per night. Stunning views from there. I managed to uh, actually put the drone up this morning from one of their little platforms, of which they've got a few, which you can sit and look at the harbour at uh, Tenby, which is a beautiful view. So that's very, very nice indeed. But other than their gardens, which are lovely, and the views from there, the hotel itself, as I say, quite basic. By which I mean, you know, the rooms were nothing special. They just had sort of cheap furniture in them. The shower was the type that comes off the taps. That sort of deal. You expect more than that, don't you, for that sort of money? Or I do, anyway. Maybe I'm just becoming a snob. And also the breakfast, bizarrely, they called a full English breakfast. Bre breakfast, and we are very definitely in Wales. That was a bit strange, but there we go. And uh, in the case of breakfast, the egg was a bit snotty. The sausage, of which there was one only, was more breadcrumbs than meat. The bacon was undercooked. It said lightly grilled tomato. Well, basically, it was a slightly warm tomato. Uh, they had a table plan. You couldn't choose what table you sat at. I don't know if that might be something to do with COVID. And generally, again, it was just a bit meh. So, yeah, can't recommend that hotel find an Airbnb or something. I booked this fairly late and I paid the price because there wasn't a lot of availability. Anyway, I digress. Let's get on with the riding once these lights change. So this is a part of Wales that I don't think I've ever visited before. So uh, I don't really know what to expect. If you've seen any of my uh, previous videos, you'll know that uh, I'm a huge fan of riding in Wales. It never disappoints. Well, so far it never has, but uh, I've always sort of ridden mid Wales and North Wales never the south as I say so a first for me I'm not expecting it to be of course as mountainous maybe not quite as spectacular but of course uh, the Pembrokeshire coast I believe is a national park isn't it so uh, the coast itself is very beautiful I'm sure not going to be seeing too much of that on the tour though we will see a bit of it as the uh, route loops around later on this afternoon towards Fishguard St David's uh, and then back to Tenby but that's a long way off, as I say, the whole route is about 190 miles, so... On some windy roads, I'm imagining that's going to take me a good, with plenty of stops, six or seven hours, I imagine. But that's going to be six or seven hours of fun. It's all very familiar with the amount of white vans at the moment. Stuck behind one, hopefully uh, I'll get an opportunity to overtake very shortly. And overtake completed and rewarded with actually a splendid view look you probably can't see that with a gopro which always flattens things out but uh, just beyond i'm heading towards a town called narbeth at the moment by the way and you can see some mountains after the town so uh, hopefully that's where i'm headed already the roads are great fun quite a lot more built up around here than uh, mid and north wales so far very popular spot for holiday makers around here on the coast, of course. So maybe choose your time wisely when you come. I'm recording this in the uh, middle of June. I think it's about June the 14th, something like that today. Maybe the 15th. And the schools haven't broken up yet. They're not on holiday. So I'm hoping it's not going to be super busy, but if... Uh, Going by how busy Tenby was yesterday evening when I was trying to find somewhere to have a bite to eat. I imagine it gets absolutely choked in school holidays. So do bear that in mind. So you may be wondering how come I'm riding the uh, trusty BMW GS rather than my still new to me Goldwing that I bought last year. Well that's quite straightforward really. I love the GS, it's a great bike. I love the Goldwing too, but the Goldwing I primarily bought as a vehicle to take when we're riding two up. So when Mrs. Fly wants to come with me, then uh, the Goldwing will be the bike I take. There is no better bike for two up touring than the Goldwing, or certainly none I've yet tried. But if just me on a tour, then the GS is almost as comfortable 
and it's a bit more practical in terms of uh, carrying my cameras and stuff in the top box with a bit less weight overall plus I love the bike and I want to get some use out of it so that's why I'm on the GS Okay, I've just left Pembrokeshire and I'm now in Carmarthenshire. Got about nine miles to run now to uh, Blanvos. This reminds me a little bit of Dartmoor. Oh yes, this is more like it. Gorgeous. Oh, this is nice. Wow. You can see what looks like a little airstrip over there of some sort. Three runways cut in the grass. Maybe it's a gliding site or something. Sadly, a lot of these 50 mile an hour limits as you come through here. But the roads are absolutely cracking. Once again, Wales doesn't disappoint. Love the way the trees have been cut here, look, just so trucks and stuff can get through. A perfect rectangle cut through. Brilliant. Time to put in my next destination. I'm not quite at, uh, where was I going? Blanvos, but I want to make sure I force myself to turn down the B4322 B4332 to Newcastle Emlyn. So that's what I'm just putting in the sat nav now. Here we go. It's only nine miles away, start new route. There we go, we'll just check that it's gonna send me down the right road that, uh, yeah, it looks like it does. There we go, right, Newcastle Emlyn then, about, uh, what's that, 10 miles on? Let's go. I don't want to talk anything up, but uh, the more I ride this bike, the more the engine just seems to settle down. I've done about 27 and a half thousand miles on this bike now. And as I say, at the risk of talking anything up, the Boxer engine just runs like clockwork on here. So here's a Blanvos, Blenvos. And according to Simon Weir's book, there's a turn off to the right just here, somewhere, in about a mile. That takes us down a slightly narrower route towards Newcastle. Not that Newcastle, Newcastle Emlyn. All right, this looks like the turn. Get out of the way a bit with this traffic. Newcastle Emlyn. So that book, by the way, by uh, Simon Weir, Bikers Britain, The Tours. It's a great book, as I say, I've used it for years now. He's written two of those books. One is just called Bikers Britain, and that's got various routes across the country. And the other, as I say, Bikers Britain, The Tours, follow on book. I've done pretty much all the tours out of that book now. I've always found them to be reliable. And uh, as I said before, if you can't be bothered to uh, come up with a route yourself, then you know that Simon's already road tested it and got you something worth doing. So I'll put a link below in the description to those books if you're interested. And just for full disclosure, those are Amazon affiliate links. So if you click on those links and you buy the book, I do get a little bit of a kickback at no extra cost to you. And they are great books. I've never met Simon, I have nothing to do with him, but uh, I know my mate Richie Vida once had to share a hotel room with him and he said he was a lovely fella. So, uh, you'll be helping him out as well. Mind you, knowing Richie's penchants for cuddling people, I hope Simon didn't have too much of a traumatic night with him. Well, how often do you get the sun in Wales? I'm informed, not that often, but uh, the few recent trips I've done here, it's been cracking. The last one was a bit rubbish with the police, it was a wet, horrible May. The wettest May since 1834, when records began. But uh, June has made up for that, and it's been beautiful. And then of course last year I did come with Mrs. Flyer on the mighty Goldwing, we did uh, sort of mid Wales and Snowdonia, and that was absolutely boiling that weekend. So I've been quite lucky to bit good times to come. You cannot beat Wales when the sun is shining, I tell you. 
So I imagine I'll get a few comments of people saying, why didn't you put the whole route into your sat-nav? You can just use whatever that bit of software is called, Garmin something or other, and put it in, and then you don't have to keep it stopping. <laughs> well, the reason I don't is because uh, I'm quite old school. I quite like using maps, hence why I've got the map on the tank. It just gives me a nice feel for where I am. And I find that just by putting the, uh, the next town in the sat-nav, that's perfectly adequate. And if I want to change the route at all and cut a bit off or whatever, I can easily do it. And I don't have to be faffing about with the frustrations of programming electronics while I'm trying to enjoy a ride. So that's why I don't do it. It's called Basecamp, isn't it, the software that people use. And when I have tried to use that, I found it very complicated and it's been a bit of a nuisance. So uh, unless they've come out with some better software now, and if they have, let me know. But if not, I'll keep, keep doing uh, what I've always done and use it on a town by town basis that just seems to work for me if you don't like that don't do it but it works for me check out these views oh and a white van nice yeah very much more low level countryside it seems thus far in South Wales it's no less beautiful for it though little watering hole there, Nag's Head, bear that in mind for future ref. Well this has turned out to be an absolutely cracking road. It's actually the A484, would you believe this is an A road? Not necessarily one you'd find yourself, so this is where Simon Weir's book comes into its own. Yeah! Check out this. River Tiffy. Cool. Let's have a look down here. Canarth Falls. So I've just stopped at this little car park, park here. It's a place called uh, Canarth Falls. C-A-E-R-N-A-T-H, something like that. It's a little car park just here, look. £2.50. C-E-N-A-R-F, sorry. Canarth Falls. £2.50 to park. £50 for a motorcycle. £50. £50p for a motorcycle. Sadly, I didn't have any uh, coins on me at all. I've only got a card. And the fella let me off. What a nice chap. Anyway, let me show you, there's a little waterfall here. Uh, well worth a little stop for a refreshing break. Well, this is all very nice. There's even a little boardwalk type thing through here. What a gorgeous spot. Fella balancing on the rocks there. Don't know if you can see him on the GoPro, but uh, goodness knows what he's doing. He looks about 70, and there's a torrent of water just there, so good luck to him. Well, hell, very pleasant. Back to the bike, anyway, let's get on with the riding. I'll tell you what, I could quite get used to this uh, touring game. Oh, very pleasant. Thank you. That was a nice guy that let me off from paying. Right. Let's get me route back then. To Newcastle Emlyn, which is uh, three miles up this road. 19 degrees centigrade now. I reckon it's going to get warmer today than the forecast said. I've packed my uh, puffer jacket to wear underneath my summer jacket just in case it gets cold but I don't think that's going to be needed I'm very glad to say 